Time now for a deeper look at some of the big stories of the week with the Inside Utah Politics panel. This week we have Salt Lake City Councilwoman Amy Fowler and former Utah GOP officer Michelle Quist. Ladies, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Uh, let's start off with the death penalty. It was a big topic during the week up on Utah's Capitol Hill. A couple years ago we saw this bill to repeal the death penalty in the state of Utah pass the Senate. This year it dies in a House committee by a vote of five to six. Michelle, let's start with you. Your thoughts on what we saw play out in that committee? Well, I mean, it, it's really hard to hear from um, victims, from families of victims. Like these are very um, emotional uh, testimonies, you know, that are given. It's, it's hard to stand in the feet of that kind of an experience when you're talking about somebody who is on death row and, uh, you know, and being a family member of, of the victim of, of that crime. Um, the, the bill keeps coming back every year. Republicans bring it. This time it was um, Lowry Snow. And I, I, I think there's a lot of appetite for it. There's a lot of waste in the litigation that goes on. Um, it costs the state a ton of money. And you know, you, you hear these, um, you hear these messages that, that once, you know, once a death happens, it, it really doesn't make them feel better often. And so it's hard to know what to do. That obviously for me, the biggest concern is when, you know, there's, there's this risk of, um, of of false guilties you know that that happens a lot and it happens with underrepresented and minority communities so i think there's appetite for the bill i think it's going to keep coming back but it appears to be dead right now yeah uh, amy your thoughts is it time to repeal the death penalty in the state of utah yes it is it is time and um to michelle's point i think that um too often we have innocent people within our criminal justice system that um, are sitting in our criminal justice system that are innocent and it marginalizes communities that have already been marginalized. And at this point, it is time um, to repeal the death penalty and to really look at our criminal justice system um, as a, and reform it. And this is one step of taking a huge step to reform our criminal justice system. Uh, Michelle, let's go back to something you brought up, and that is Republicans are behind this bill. They're the ones bringing it. It passed a Republican-dominated Senate a few years ago. House leadership this year coming out opposing that bill. Uh, but it has caught the attention of Republicans mostly from a fiscal standpoint. So what will it take to potentially push it over the hump here in the state? I think time and messaging. Um, you know, one of the primary um, you know reasons this week for keeping it was the um, ability it gives prosecutors to um, you know, uh, f make a deal or, or find information or, or obtain information in, in, in uh, return for, for dropping the death penalty. That hardly seems like a reason to keep the death penalty. Perhaps we just need to um, figure out better um, ways to exchange information or, or, you know, make those kinds of prosecutorial deals. But uh, I, think it's, I think it's coming back and, and eventually it, I think it will pass. Uh, Amy, your thoughts on that, it, you, being used as leverage potentially to get information you might need to help as solve a case. I appreciate that, Glenn. As a criminal defense attorney, I think using a stick that big, it, 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 it's too much, right? And then we do have innocent people that look at the risk of losing their lives and saying, wait a minute, the risk is too big, I'll do something else, I'll take a plea deal. And, and it, it, we don't need that anymore. Um, and we never should have had it. And, and now we really do need to take the steps to repeal the death penalty and look at all of our systems of criminal justice reform. Let's take a look at another bill gaining attention up on Capitol Hill, and that is a voting bill sponsored by Representative Phil Lyman. It would <coughs> essentially eliminate vote by mail and drop boxes and make other changes to state election law here <laughs> in the state of Utah. It's my understanding at this point it hasn't come out of rules. I don't know if it will, but Michelle, your thoughts on that bill? I, I don't understand why it's being run. I mean, Republicans are the ones, you know, that we started vote by mail in this state. Like, we trumped it up, we, you know, and, and it has increased our voter turnout. Um, there's, there's no reason to suppress the vote. Uh, if, if you can't be elected without suppressing the vote, maybe you shouldn't be elected. Um, I, I don't think this bill um, is going anywhere. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think people believe that there are the kinds of problems that the sponsor is saying that there might be. Plus, it's 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 it costs a lot of money. I mean, pic, you know, it, it requires pictures of of each ballot uh, online. You know, there's security risks with that. Um, I I just don't think it's a good idea at all. Amy, your thoughts on that bill? Well, I 100% agree with Michelle. Uh, 
this is yet a way to disenfranchise people that have continued to be disenfranchised. And at the end of the day, as an elected official, I just want people to, people's voices to be heard. And that is exactly what we should have, is an opportunity for people's voices to be heard. And this is a way to take away that voice. And at Michelle's point, like everybody wants their voice heard. And this simply is against all of the values that we have in having a democracy where people can be heard and taking away any sort of power for them. Michelle, you posed the question, why is this bill even being run? I think we know the answer to that question. It's suspicion that some have from the previous election in 2020. Anything that potentially does need to be addressed in um, your viewpoint? I, I, I don't think anything that our clerks aren't already addressing. I think our lieutenant governor who's over elections and our county clerks are um, very focused on making sure that things are being run according you know, to the rules and the statutes and that um, identities are confirmed and that signatures are confirmed. I mean, from what I understand, every wet signature is confirmed against the voter rolls. And, you know, I, I don't know how much better you can, you can do. I, I think I, I trust our county clerks and our lieutenant governor. I think they're doing a good job. Uh, one of my sons who participated in the election did have his ballot returned because of signature and he had to prove that it was him. So I actually saw that in action. Amy, your final thoughts on that? You know, I, again, I agree with Michelle and I appreciate it. I think that our county clerks are doing an amazing job. And what vote by mail has done is only increased the power of the voice. It increases the ability to actually have your voice heard. It increases access. And that is what this is all about, making sure that we're increasing access. I imagine in 2030, we'll all just look at our phones and it will recognize it and we'll vote by, the <laughs> by, rec by our phones. And we need to recognize that we continue to have um, technology come out and we shouldn't deter that. Okay, I wanna get to the 2022 Senate race. We're just months away from the primary now. Michelle, on the Republican side, how do you see it playing out between Senator Mike Lee and challengers Becky Edwards and Allie Isom? I love it. I love that these women are doing, um, uh, you know, are running great campaigns. I love that the primary is um, fulsome and that, you know, there. I think Senator Lee knows there is a threat. I think he knows that people are, um, uh, you know, looking at options. And, and I, I think um, Ali Isom and, and Becky uh, Edwards are running great campaigns. I can't wait to see how it plays out. One question for you. Can both of those two challengers be on the primary and one of them beat incumbent Mike Lee? Or do, do they need to, or, or would it be a better shot for just one of them on the ballot is what I'm asking? I mean, it, it would be a better shot for one of them if, you know, uh, you know one against Senator Lee. Um, I, I don't want to say which one. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to ask one or the other. And, um, you know, as far as splitting the votes, between those two women, one is, is more conservative, so perhaps he w would take from Senator Lee as opposed to take from um, the other you know, candidate, but mm -hmm. it's hard to know. Uh, very interesting dynamic playing out on the Democratic side, Amy. I'd like to get your thoughts on that. Back in December, Ben McAdams was on this show and he said, look, the Democrats should run nobody and get behind in, uh, independent candidate Evan McMullen. What do you think of that strategy? You know, I think we, in some ways, this goes back to about voting. It's about the voice of the people. And like I always say, again, as an elected official in a nonpartisan race, uh, uh, parks have no RRD next to them. Your potholes have no RRD next to them. Most of us want the same things, and uh, we just want somebody that's there to represent us and to get the work done. And it doesn't matter if you're an independent, a Democrat, or a Republican. In reality, I think the majority of Utahns actually just want the same thing. And we can do that with Evan McMullen, maybe. But I think with remembering that we don't have to be tied to those parties. Uh, Michelle, your thoughts on a potential general matchup with a strong independent candidate in the mix? I, I think, it, I think if an independent candidate makes it hard to know how they're going to vote. Um, I think they're just trying to, to go around the rules, uh, you know, or the system that's in place and that it harms those that are within the system. Um, I would love to see the Democratic Party in Utah um, run stronger candidates so that we do have, you know, two strong parties in the state. I think that's always best for both parties. 
Um, and, uh, that's probably what I would have preferred to see. Okay, mm -hmm. Amy, I see you kind of thinking there a little bit. Yeah. I only have about 15 seconds left, real quick. Yeah, again, I, I disagree that we need to be stuck to a two-party system. I think that we can be open and, in fact, maybe should be nonpartisan in a lot of ways because the things that we need done just need somebody out there doing the work. Okay, we're going to have to end it on that note. Really appreciate the conversation. Thanks for being here to both of you. Good to be here. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more Inside Utah Politics.